Hi, so today we're going to look at six of the most common mistakes you see happening in a Pilates class. And although we're going to look at this specifically in relation to Pilates, then actually this can be carried out across the board, whether you're doing yoga or PT or a HIIT class, it doesn't matter. If you kind of have these six things in mind when you're doing any type of exercise, then it will really hold you in good stead. So we're gonna look at three different movements in this and it's gonna start from beginner and go all the way through to intermediate and then a little bit more advanced. So you can do as much of this as you feel comfortable with, but again, we're always gonna be relating it back to those six principles. And if you have any questions or any problems, just let us know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on our back. Now, when we're on our back, a couple of things that we wanna look at first is do you feel like you're overextending your neck? So we wanna set up our movements for success. So if you do, you need to grab yourself a pillow to make sure that you're comfortable. Now, if you're slightly broader, then you will actually find that this is gonna happen no matter what. So you will probably always need a pillow and that's really okay. So we're gonna start with, uh, they're called femur arcs, dead bugs, toe taps, you might've heard them called various different things and they happen all the time in all sorts of classes from fitness all the way through to pre and postnatal um, and injury prevention. So it's what we're gonna do is you're basically going to lift one leg up to a roughly 90-90 position and pop it back down again, and then the other leg. Okay, so this is really easy and everybody can do this. Now, one of the first things we're gonna look at is focusing your movement. So what are you doing and why, okay? So we want you to feel the three heavy spots in your back, which is the back of your uh, neck, the back of your ribs, and the back of your tail. Now, if you feel those, then those should be in the natural curves of your spine. So you should have little gaps underneath, them, uh, underneath the other bits. Now, when we're doing this movement, we want to be able to maintain those curves. So these are the curves that you would naturally have when you're standing. Okay, and all we're doing in this movement is moving from our hip joints. So we're hip flexing, we're hip extending. And yes, our abdominals are here to support us in this. Our hip flexors are doing the work, okay? So you will feel something moving, but, and, you, and you will feel quite a lot in the front of your thigh if you do this for a very long time. But what we wanna focus on is actually the back of you. So can you keep the back of you the same? So are you focusing this movement? Are you getting movement from your hip joint rather than kind of rotating and squiggling and, and kind of moving all over the place? So can you make this really specific? So this should feel really easy, okay? And once you understand where this place is and your pelvis, your, so your pelvic clock is staying nice and equal as we move these legs, your uh, spine, so those three heavy points are staying the same, then we can move on to step two. Now step two is if you lift one leg up to tabletop and as you sigh out, you can lift the other leg. And then if you pop one leg down and then pop the other leg down, and we're gonna do the opposite side and you're just gonna feel what this is like. And you're gonna feel this in relation to those heavy points on the back of you. So have they stayed the same? Now the other thing is, is if you put your hands on your tummy, quite often what you'll feel is over recruitment. So you will brace okay so if you lift one leg up what you might feel is that as you lift the other you pop okay which creates you an arch in your lower back or you might feel that you crunch into it to lift up the side and you can see that my voice has kind of changed it sounds a little bit more strained okay so that's bracing so we call this over recruiting now what you might feel is that when people do this, they say, pull your tummy into your spine, okay? And you, you know, this drop your ribs, okay? All of that is trying to over recruit muscles that don't necessarily need to. Now, when you're up here with one leg, if you pop your hands on your tummy and all those kind of cues that you've had about this sort of internal zipper back to front to tummy button, this sense of drawing your abdominals gently together, you're just gonna hold one leg up and you're gonna breathe into your hands that are on your tummy. Now, as you breathe in, your hands should rise and as you breathe out, your hands should fall. Okay, and what we wanna achieve when we're doing this movement is it's still the same. So you'll get more tone, i.e. things will feel harder because they're working, but actually it won't shoot up, but it won't shoot down either. So you'll start to feel that there's a little bit of hardness in your tummy. You can still breathe, 
you can still talk, and those three points in the back of you are staying relatively the same. So this is your intermediate step, and you should be able to do this with both legs leading. And you should be able to do this without over recruiting those abs and kind of crunching and bracing everything down. This is an easy exercise, okay? I say easy like that because actually it's quite challenging in order to be able to A, keep going, B, it's open chain, so you've got to know where your body is in space, you've got no resistance, so you've got no feedback of what it's doing. And so it's actually more complicated than people think. But the aim of the game is can you hold a conversation? Can you feel like you can take deep breaths? Has your tummy continued to move naturally whilst you do this kind of marching on the spot? Okay, so we're looking at that. Can you just give as much as is necessary for you to achieve this task? Now, if the answer is no, then you keep working on it, okay? Which means you don't need to go and do loads of really heavy abdominal work. But actually, this might be the place that you go until all the answers to those questions are yes. So on our next one, we're going to pause at the top, okay? And you should still feel these three heavy places. Now, the front of your hip should be relatively soft, okay? So it shouldn't feel like there's like a big guitar string sticking out into the front of your hips. Now, if there is, you might want to just drop your shins a little bit, all right? So you, you want a relative balance in the front and the back of your legs. So this is called balancing the movement. So everything should be working in conjunction with something else. Now, if you feel when you extend your legs, what you feel is these front muscles kick on, that's because they can't balance with the back anymore, roughly. So what we wanna find is where is your position today where you can get that sense of your hip joints or your hips just sinking into the joints. Now, if our hands are on the same position, we're still focusing on those three points in your back, can we do the same movement? So we're just tapping one toe down to the floor and then we're tapping the others. And again, the first place is, can you feel that those three points, <clears throat> excuse me, stay relatively the same? So if the answer is yes, fantastic. Can you still breathe when you're doing this movement? So are you puffing and breathing right from up in your chest or are you holding your breath, which is another common mistake? Or can you talk, hold a conversation, and just feel like your abdominals are doing what is necessary in order for the leg to move and for your body to stay the same? Now, if we look back at focusing this movement, what you'll see most people doing is this. So it will come really close to them. Their foot will end up really close to them. But actually, we want to try and maintain these kind of degrees, these 90-90 positions. And can you move from your hip socket to tap the foot down and to bring it back up again? So there's focusing that movement. What are we trying to do? Again, we're trying to hip extend, and then we're trying to hip flex. And the whole time, our abdominals are just supporting those natural curves in your spine. So this is what you want to achieve. So it's about not forgetting the basis of what is your movement, where is it coming from, and why are you doing it? So if that feels okay, then this is a great place for you to start, and this is a lovely warm-up. You will feel this in the front of your thighs if we keep going, because your hip flexors are working, and that's really okay. So if you're happy with that, what we're going to do is we're gonna switch it into Superman, which is another really common exercise that everybody does through both fitness, Pilates, yoga, um, and also in, into physio. So the first thing we wanna look at is how we weight bear, all right? And we kind of all know how to do this kind of cat-cow position, but can we find this middle ground in our spine? And then the next thing we want to do is what are our arms doing? So they need to support us. So if you find that you're sagging down, okay, you need to push your hands into the floor to lift your spine without over flexing. So it's a really nice one to do in front of the mirror. Can you maintain that shoulder stability? And what we're looking at, so Superman is one arm out, one leg out to create this really nice shape. Now, again, if we focus on what this movement should be, so we want to avoid this really big side-to-side -side movement, okay? We're looking for control in, in a very straight line, but in a slightly different position. 
Okay, so we're trying to control that rotation and that lateral sway. Now, if you really stand into your left arm and right hand, you're gonna slide your middle finger and your big toe away from each other. Okay, so we're trying to create tension. We're trying to create tension in both the standing arm, standing leg, so they're actively pushing into the floor, and we're trying to create tension, like we're stretching an elastic band. Now, if you continue to stretch that elastic band away from you, you will start to come up. And then you're gonna come back down again. So I'm hitting my kitchen counter, so I'm just gonna come forward a little bit. So you're gonna stretch that arm and leg away from you. You should feel that then there's not much lateral slide. And if you keep stretching, you should be able to come up. Now, if you look down, is your static leg still vertical? Is your arm still pushing into the floor? Have you sunk? And then you're gonna bring it back down again. So if we do the other side, so you slide the big toe and the middle finger away from you. And then we reach it so far you can come up. Now the next common mistake you find is this. So actually that's all movement from your back. It's not from your hip. So if your hips, if your spine stays still and your hip reaches away, you will get to a point where it just can't go any further. This is where you then need to focus. So you'll get much more glute activation. You'll get much more abdominal control because we're really trying to find the ends of your movement rather than just lifting, okay? So this movement is about stability. It's about weight bearing. And it's about the back of your body firing in order to lift you up. So that's the focus of the movement. The other questions, are you breathing or not? Are you trying to squeeze your abdominals to keep you still? Are you squeezing your bottom to lift your leg? None of that needs to happen. Your muscles will work as much as is necessary for you to achieve the task at hand. Have we remembered the basics? So can you stand into your arms, keep the ground away from you and find that hip movement? Is your pelvic clock staying level? Can you do all of this stuff whilst moving opposite hand, opposite leg, maintaining that straight position in order to feel your abdominals fire? Fantastic. So the last one we're gonna look at is um, almost like a back plank. So what you tend to find when we're doing lots of abdominal exercises is we sit crunched. And then in fitness classes, we do lots of movements where you're flexing, you're doing sit-ups, you're doing all that kind of stuff to try and strengthen your abdominals. Whereas actually what we wanna do is if we've strengthened our abdominals, we're in this position, we wanna work that way, okay? So we wanna get all the back of your muscles firing. Now, if you do find that you have a posture problem and you tend to sit round-shouldered and you sit like this, and you're doing loads of abdominal exercises to try and kind of keep you upright, your abdominals, when they work, get shorter. So you either need to make work to make them longer or we need to focus on something else. So this is where then balancing this movement comes in. So a lot of people will go, I'm doing a bench press, so therefore I need to do a row. So for as much as you strengthen the front, you strengthen the back. And this is where we tend to forget what we're doing, particularly in Pilates classes. You tend to find a lot of people will lie on their back very much and then won't focus on, on um, moving their spine and getting their back muscles really firing. And there's loads of different ways to do this, but we're gonna look at it in a relatively advanced way. So you can look at this by simply lying on your tummy and there's other exercises that we've got on our website that you can take a look at in order to really start to fire up these. But if you are looking at a more advanced exercise and you're doing more intermediate advanced classes, this is the place for you. So this is like a plank, but in reverse. So we're really looking at the back of our body. That's the focus. Now what we want is we actually want our fingertips to face towards our toes. Because if our fingertips face away from us, you can see I go into a little bit of extension. And actually what we want is to maintain just a little bit of flexion into your upper body to protect your neck. Okay, so that then it gives the whole of your paraspinals and your back muscles, the back of your leg muscles, the ability to work. Now, if that's a struggle with your wrists, then you just have to ever so slightly kind of turn them out until you find a position that's comfortable for you. So if your legs come out long, we're gonna start to lean back. 
And again, those fingertips are kind of on the outside of you. So they're slightly uh, wider than your hips because they're about where your shoulders are. And they're gonna be flat. The first thing is if you just slump down. So now we wanna recruit our muscles. So we're gonna stand into the floor in order to lift us up a little bit. So right now we've got this lovely activity in the back of your body. And if you look down at your toes, because this is where we're gonna be looking the whole time to protect your neck, is we're gonna be really active in where this movement comes from and it's gonna be coming from your feet. So if we stand into your hands, you'll feel like your bottom can lift off a little bit. Now if you really point your toes, so you're gonna open up the front of those ankles and press down into the floor, you can see that you can lift up. Okay, I'm looking all the way down at my toes to protect my neck, so I'm not up here really working through the front of my neck. I'm down here and using the back of my body to support me. And then if I open my sit bones, I can just come back down again. You can come off between each one, take your hands in the opposite direction so your wrists get a chance to relax. But this is the movement. So if we look at those different bits, when are we breathing? So quite often our exhale will help us to create force. So if you breathe out as you press to push down and reach, you'll be able to come up potentially a little bit easier. And then you can inhale to come back down again. So that's the first thing. So where are you breathing? Are you breathing? Can we do this with our breath? Can you still talk? So here comes our over recruitment of muscles. Are you squeezing your bottom and really just dropping into your chest and using your abdominals in order to lift you? If you are, stop, come back down again. Because remember, your muscles will work as much as is necessary for you to achieve the task. Now the next thing is, are you focusing on your movement? So can you create space? If you reach your ankles, you're opening up the front of your ankles, you're trying to keep the space in both the front and the back of you. Can you keep that space? Can you keep that openness? And then you just come back down again. So this is us trying to balance the front and the back of your body. Now the next question that comes up a lot is speed. So if you move really nice and slowly, you're looking at much more time under tension in those muscles. So you'll get a little bit more control. With speed, you want power. So if you're trying to throw a ball really far, you can't do it, you can't do it slowly. You have to do it with speed. Whereas if you're trying to gain stability, you want to get some time in those positions. You want to allow yourself a little bit slower movement in order to really feel where everything's going. Can you keep pushing into that floor? Can you feel your shoulders working? Can you feel your ankles opening? Can you feel your hips working? To then come back down again. So can we slow that speed down in order to get a little bit more control, a little bit more time under those muscles in order to give you that stability, okay? And then it's again back to those basics. We're looking at hip extension. We're looking at shoulder control. So if you go back to all those basic exercises that you used to do, what does this look like? Is your pelvic clock level? Or are you dropping down to one side? Are you rounding over those shoulders? So if we go right back to things like arm arcs, can you control your arms moving around your body? So never forget the basics because the basics lead to the bigger movements. So the six things that you really wanna be focusing on during your movement classes are, are you squeezing to over recruit those muscles? You should always be able to breathe. The harder the exercise, the more your muscles will work. The easier the exercise, the less you'll feel it. And that's okay, because you don't want the easy things to feel really, really hard. Are you breathing? Are you able to maintain a steady breath, always inflating your lungs, deflating them, letting your belly rise and fall? Are you able to do that or are you having the tendency to hold your breath? If you are holding your breath a lot, then try going back to some of those basic exercises and see if you can just start to find those really lovely movement patterns whilst you breathe because your breath really helps you as you get to the more advanced things. The next one is speed. How quickly are you going? If you're looking for power, if you're looking to run really, really quickly, you need to lift load and you need to do things quickly, okay? So if you're looking for that control, if you're looking for that 
time in your muscles, if you're looking for that kind of postural benefit as well, you need to move a little bit slower. And ideally we do a bit of both because then you can throw that ball really, really far. Or you can jump really, really high, but then you can land really nicely and your body can have that kind of shock absorption and know where you are. Then are you focusing on your movement? Where is it coming from? What should, be, what should you be feeling? What should be working? What's, what are the joints doing? How are the joints moving? So what is the reality? Why are you doing this movement? What are you trying to achieve from this movement? So really focusing down on that and understanding what's important within this movement. And then it's about balancing. So it's about choice. Are you always doing loads of things that flex you forward or are you doing loads of things that extend you back? And you want this balance. So for every push, you do a pull. And that's what you want. So you want to work those back muscles and it's okay to feel the muscles in your lower back. There's some really big muscles down there. So if you're finding that in your classes you're doing a lot of flexion work, can you, either by yourself or with somebody else, look at slightly more things that will take you into extension or, like that final exercise, allow you to work those anti-gravity muscles but in a slightly more comfortable position? And then it's about not forgetting the basics. So remember, all the boring basic exercises, if you put them all together, you will make the biggest exercises in the world. But you've got to know how to do the basics. If you're finding that you're plateauing in your movement and you just can't quite get into some of the bigger things, what's happening earlier on? Are you able to actually do the basic movements really, really well? And if the answer is no, then that's where you need to come back to because if you don't have your foundations, then the minute you try and do something really big and really strong that requires really well integrated movement is the minute that you'll start to have problems. So I hope these tips have been useful. I hope you've enjoyed those exercises. Take all these six things into any class that you do with anybody, it, whether it be fitness, whether it be yoga, whether it be Pilates, it doesn't matter. But these are some really nice ways of you ensuring that you're looking after your own body.